All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to set up a drive like this one that is gonna be compatible with Windows, Mac, and Linux on a Raspberry Pi. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna be using XFAT. XFAT is essentially the most compatible file system across the three major operating systems. And so it basically will work with just about anything you plug it into. The one thing to note, XFAT is actually licensed by Windows. So Mac OS actually has to pay Windows every single time they sell a laptop with Mac on it, a small license fee. And so that's the same reason why when you buy Synology NAS, if you want XFAT, you have to pay, I think it's like three or $4 because that is paying for that XFAT license. With Raspberry Pi, they are not allowed to ship the XFAT utilities directly on Raspbian. But what you can do is you can download basically some software that emulates XFAT. It basically just implements XFAT without actually being XFAT. And so it works completely fine and it is completely free on a Raspberry Pi. And so XFAT is honestly the only file system that you can really reliably use on Windows, Mac, and Linux because everything else tends to be only compatible with maybe one or two, but never with all three. It's the one that always works, and that's actually what I format a lot of my stuff to if I need it transferable. I know it's guaranteed no matter what Mac or Windows I plug it into, it's going to work with XFAT. Then on the Linux side, I know I can install it on there. It's really easy to use, and it's really nice to set up. All right, so I'm gonna be using the Samsung T7S that they actually sent me. It's actually got a little thumbprint reader, and we're gonna be using it for this video because it comes out of the box installed with XFAT. And that's actually what I think just about every single major hard drive actually comes with out of the box if it's an external hard drive. And so if right out of the box we tried to mount this, we would be completely unable to because our Raspberry Pi out of the box has no idea how to use XFAT. And so to do that, we're gonna go ahead and SSH into our Raspberry Pi, and we're going to install XFAT utilities. And so it's incredibly easy, just do sudo apt update to update your package links. And so now our package links are up to date, so now we're gonna type in sudo apt install XFAT. And there should be two of them, XFAT fuse and XFAT utilities. So install XFAT fuse. And this is actually what fuses XFAT into our Raspberry Pi. Then XFAT utility is basically what actually connects to XFAT. And so now that we've installed XFAT fuse, we're gonna install XFAT utilities. All right, and so just like that, we've now got it hooked up. And so now what we need to do is we need to mount it. And I'll just do this manually for the first time. And so to do that, we're gonna do a sudo mkdir, and we'll put it at mount we'll put it at drive. So we're basically gonna create a directory in the folder mount. And so that way we're gonna have something to mount it to. And so now all we have to do is actually mount it. We'll do a sudo lsblk to see what storage is currently connected. And so we can see that right here, there's this two terabyte drive that we've got hooked up. And so it's sdb1. And so we're going to be using that when we mount it. And so to mount it, it's incredibly easy. We're doing sudo, mount, dash T, and it's going to be XFAT as the type, and then where it is, and so that's gonna be dev for devices, and then whatever this is right here. So SDB1. And so as you'll notice, there's an SDB and an SDB1. So you wanna select SDB1 because it is the partition of SDB. And now where is it going? And that is going to be mount, and drive. Oh, I spelled mount wrong. And so now we can see that fuse XFAT just ran. And so now we should be able to CD into mount. Do an LS. And so just like that, we can see that the files are on there and we're able to use them. So it is super easy to use. And now we're able to mount them. You can also format XFAT drives. You can also mount them on boot up with the FSTAB file. You can do everything just like it's a regular EXT4 drive. But now you'll be able to take this exact thing out and stick it in a Mac or stick it in a Windows laptop and it will just work. It's really nice convenient being able to get files around like this and it works really well. And so we also do not have to pay anything which is even better. All right, well that's it for this tutorial. I know this was quick and easy, but it's done. All right. 
Go ahead and leave any of the tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below. And have a good one. Bye.